if I may have your attention for just a second, if you would be kind enough to silence your electronic devices or cell phones for us, please, we thank you.
Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. The Court of Appeals of Indiana is now in session. Please be seated. Thank you all for coming. This is an exciting day for the court, for this judiciary, the state of Indiana, and we welcome you. It is my pleasure to introduce Pastor Roland Daniels from the Madison Park Church, Anderson, Indiana, and would ask him to come forward and give his invocation. I would ask you at this time to stand, please, and after the prayer, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray together. Gracious God, there are many days that we recognize that the common hand is too small and a common voice would be too weak. Today, O oh God, we cannot deny that by your sovereignty you have placed Judge Rudolph Pyle here today. We do not take for granted this measure of honor, the immense responsibility that will be placed upon him. And we thank you for bringing him to this place. And O oh God, as we enter into this ceremony, we ask for an extra measure of wisdom to be upon him. Your word tells us that if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives without reservation, and then may he not be like the reed tossed to and fro by the wind. So, O oh God, we, may, we ask that you make him a strong tower of your strength, that you would give him an extra measure of understanding so that every side of every issue might be measured with a keen sense of wisdom. And may you fill his heart with fairness and justness. And, O oh God, may you guide his mind also in that way, because only from the heart and the mind are great decisions made. Now, Lord, may your presence be upon us as we continue in this ceremony. May you be honored in every aspect. And may throughout this panel of judges, O oh God, may your spirit move. May you guide them. May you grant them strength. And may you pour your mercy out upon them. We ask in the strong name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You'd all join with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It is my pleasure to introduce my colleagues and friends in the row in front of me, to my right, your left, Judge John Baker, Judge Ezra Friedlander, Judge Paul Mathias, and Judge Patricia Riley. And in the front row, Judge Edward Najem, Jr., Judge Melissa May, Judge Nancy Vadick, Judge Michael Barnes, Judge Terry Crone, Judge Cale Bradford, and Judge Elaine Brown. We can give them applause. Yeah. <laughs> it is also my pleasure to introduce Judge Martha Blood Wentworth, Judge of the Indiana Tax Court. You can wave so they know who you are. <laughs> And senior judge, uh, senior judges, senior judge Carr Darden, senior judge William Gerard, and senior judge John Sharpneck. Are they, I didn't know. They, are they both here? Yeah. Where am I? Oh, and. Two other judges that, that uh, well, judges. well, one's a senior <laughs> judge one is, from yeah. our court. The other we miss, who's no longer a member of the judiciary, uh, Justice uh, Ted Bohm and Justice Frank Sullivan, Professor Frank Sullivan. <laughs> and also Senior Judge Tom Fisher, form, Senior Judge of the Tax Court. We have several other dignitaries and special guests that I'd like to introduce. I'd like to begin with our governor, Governor Daniels. And 
and Anita Samuel, general counsel to the governor. I'm going to ask you to hold your applause um, so we can get through the list. We have federal judge John Tinder from the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit, Judge Mag Jane Magnus Stinson from the Southern District of Indiana, Judge Tanya Walton Pratt from the Southern District, and Judge Sarah Evans Barker, and Magistrate Judge Tim Baker from the Southern District of Indiana. Have I gotten all of our federal bre brethren and sis sis sister sisters? <laughs> okay. Uh, we have state court trial judges. Uh, Judge David Hoppy from the Madison Superior Court, number four, and Judge George Gasparovic from the Judge Pendleton Town Court, and Judge Robin Moberly of the Marion Superior Court, who is also president of the Indiana Judges Association. We have members of the bar to be here with us today Tom Pierce, who is executive director of the Indiana State Bar Association. Julie Armstrong, Executive Director of the Indianapolis Bar Association, and Michelle Wilson, Executive Director of the Indiana Trial Lawyers. From academia, we have Dean Gary Roberts from the Indiana University Robert H. McKinney School of Law. I'm learning that might be the longest school name anywhere. We have uh, several other important dignitaries. Steve Lancaster, who's really important because he's our court administrator, who makes us all look good. Noel Allen, who's administrative law judge for the Indiana Department of Workforce Development. Steve Owens, who is Indiana State Public Defender. Kevin Smith, administrator of the Supreme Court and clerk of the Supreme Court, Court of Appeals and Tax Court. Heather Smith, chief deputy, uh, clerk of the Supreme Court, Court of Appeals and Tax Court. Lily Judson, who's executive director of the Division of State Court Administration. And David Remendini, who's chief deputy of the executive, Chief Deputy Executive Director of the Division of State Court Administration. We have Robert Rath, who's Director of the Appellate Court Technology. Mary Dupreez, who's Director and Counsel for the Trial Court Technology. Adrian Meering, who's Counsel for the Commission on Judicial Qualifications and the Judicial Nominating Commission. And special guest, Eric Gumbo, who's President of the Board of the Legal Aid Center of Eldoret, Kenya, and he's a practicing attorney there and Milka Cheptinga, who's executive director and a full-time attorney for LACE in Eldoret, Kenya. Please help me welcome all of these wonderful guests. I'd now like to call on Chief Justice Brent Dixon, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, to introduce the justices of his court. The Indiana Supreme Court is honored and delighted to be part of Judge Pyle's robing ceremony today. And present are all four of the sitting judges on our court at the present time, uh, Justice uh, Robert Rucker, Justice Stephen David, and Justice Mark Massa. We're delighted to be here. It is now my pleasure to introduce once again the Honorable Mitchell Daniels, Governor of the State of Indiana, to make his remarks. May it please the court. I, uh, in a moment, will turn to uh, words of praise for the appointee, but uh, I think, first of all, it's very important to confront directly and uh, refute some unfounded and, frankly, insulting suspicions that may be extant in the crowd. The idea that any factor other than pure merit was involved in this selection to imagine that would diminish uh, this, the uh, credibility of the choice and demean the judge himself. And so I want to categorically and emphatically deny that it was any factor in my selection of Rudy Pyle that he is a motorcycle instructor. <laughs> <laughs> in a close one, it would have been a tiebreaker. But this was not a close call. I am enormously proud to be associated with this appointment and with the career which I know awaits Judge Pyle. I'm so proud to be associated with him that I've appointed him twice. <laughs> the only person of whom uh, I'll ever be able to say that or 
The only person who will ever have to admit to that. <laughs> That's the way you choose to think about it. It turns out I'm the only, I'm the only person, because I checked with Judge Pop, uh, who noticed that it was three years ago to the day that I appointed him to his present post in Madison County. And it's been one of the finest, most justified uh, choices that I've made in eight years of this assignment. Um, I would simply suggest to you, you may want to mark it on your calendar, three years from now, October 16, 2015, who knows what he may be appointed to. <laughs> One thing I'll never forget and have often told about that day was a terrific gesture. I think so, so emblematic of the man I've come to know that uh, when the ceremony, the counterpart to this was done, it was a joyful event. Uh, before the reception, which was to follow, Judge Pyle asked everyone's indulgence, uh, took me by the arm and just a couple other people, and we went upstairs to his new chamber where he conducted his first case as a judge of the uh, Madison Court, Madison County Court. It was a joyful occasion all by itself. It was an adoption, as I recall. And I thought it said so much about his sense of stewardship and his sense of commitment to the job. Uh, and uh, it was just a moment that I uh, won't forget. And as I say, one that I enjoy telling to other people who don't even yet know Rudy. Another thing that I love about this particular ascension to the bench is uh, that the, the sort of life he's led on his way here. In particular, I have to tell you, that he was a state trooper, a member of the Indiana <coughs> State Police, an organization uh, who, uh, who's... Uh, a support, I believe, to be, along with the National Guard, the, pre the premier responsibility of the job I hold, claiming priority and precedent over all others. And uh, as far as we can tell, this is historic, an historic moment in that I am unaware of a predecessor with that background coming to this high judicial office. I think it's a terrific thing. This is just a personal observation, but first of all, some of the finest teachers that I encounter in schools of Indiana these days are people who came to the profession mid-career and brought with them other experiences and other perspectives from the business or the military or some other walk of life. If the pastor will forgive some of the best ministers I've known, didn't go come up through divinity school all the way, but <laughs> were called to that office uh, somewhere midstream. And I just have to believe that Judge Pyle will enrich this court, will add a, a, a new dimension based on the different sort of life he has led and the direct experience that he has had in many of the matters which are going to come before him for consideration. You know, lastly, what uh, your stellar career, Rudy, says to me, and I hope to everyone, that is that Indiana is a place where anything is possible and a person can make of himself the finest sort of success just based on diligence and character. And the kind that Caroline and Rudolph Jr. obviously instilled in you. And we are all deeply proud to see this day come and to celebrate with you and to look ahead with terrific, terrific uh, anticipation to the new dimensions of service that you will bring to a life already filled with them. Congratulations and thanks for accepting.
one more person in the audience I didn't introduce, and I would like to, Jan Dixon, the wife of our Chief Justice, who is a tremendous supporter of judicial families, and we appreciate that. Thank you. I would now like to reintroduce our senior judge, Carr Darden, to present Judge Pyle to all of us. Thank you, Madam Chief Judge. I, uh, before I make my remarks, I'd like to ask the governor whether I'm under some kind of investigation because he stole my uh, motorcycle comment. <laughs> <laughs> he stole my indulgence comment, so <laughs> I certainly was going to ask him that, and the other judges told me to ask you that, too, whether or not Rudy being a motorcycle rider had anything to do with it, whether it tilted in his favor or not. But I would like to uh, ask you for just a few moments of indulgence here. I think by now all of you know how I feel about Judge Powell, Rudy. You see, today we all see him as this very smart, hardworking, young, charismatic jurist who has a bright future ahead of him. But you see, I've been knowing that for a long time. See, all of our clerks on the court are special. If they were not, they wouldn't be working for the court. But see, in my humble opinion, Rudy Powell, Powell was a very, very special clerk and young lawyer. I'm just not throwing it out there, and I'm going to cite to you why I feel the way I do. See, Rudy, at the time that he was in my chamber, was the youngest lawyer on my staff. On this particular day, and I have not told this story, Rudy has no idea what I'm going to say, and I hope it doesn't embarrass uh -oh. him. But uh, only people in my chambers knew about it. But on this particular day, several years back, this case came into my chambers. It came in on a dolly. If you know what a dolly is, put the whole freight around, you know, big items. Well, this case had 19 boxes, <laughs> multiple attorneys, hundreds and hundreds of exhibits, thousands of pages. When the lawyers would cite to the record, they would say, page. 15,945. I mean, that's how large this case was. Now, that is typically the type of case that you assign to your senior most clerk, your senior clerk. Now, I had a good senior clerk, but I'm sure she was shaking in her boots at the time, thinking that she was going to get that case. Rudy stepped out of his office and saw the case. He said, Judge, let me have it. You know, I try to play it off. I said, you think you're ready, Mr. Powell? I mean, this is, you know, naturally I wanted to give it to him, but I, I was going to try to set it up. You know, and he said, I think I can handle it. I signed it to him. He worked on it for several months. Sometimes he would uh, reach an impasse, and I'd take him aside and say, hey, let's step back work on something else, we'll pick it up, and we'll start again. But anyway, to make a long story short, we finally got it done. We circulated a draft for almost 60 pages to the other panel members. They signed off on it. Our Supreme Court denied it, denied transfer. The U.S. Supreme Court denied it such a I was impressed, and I think you would be also because that's the Rudy Powell that I know. Rudy, would you please step forward, let the people in the audience see you, and see what I and Governor Daniels has known for quite a while.
Mr. and Mrs. Powell, would you like to step forward also? We will now administer the oath to Judge Powell. Judge Powell, would you raise your right hand and repeat after me? I, Rudolph R. Powell III, do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Indiana. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Indiana. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties of the judge for the Court of Appeals of Indiana. Discharge the duties of the Court of Appeals of Indiana. According to the best of my skill and ability. According to the best of my skills and ability. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Thank you, uh, one and all, for so many who've come to this uh, robing ceremony. I want to thank God for the opportunity and thank you, Governor Daniels, for your appointment, for I am honored and humbled to accept uh, this assignment. I'm again mindful that uh, this appointment is not something that I'm entitled to. I am merely a trustee over this position until it's time that my assignment is completed. This day is also not about me. It's about so many of you who've been a part of my life journey. And so let me begin by asking a question. How many of you have had someone come into your life, either as a role model, a mentor, gave you that first opportunity, pulled you aside, gave you some sage advice so you wouldn't stumble or fall? If you've had a person like that in your life, just raise your hand. Outstanding. Almost everyone here is going to understand what I must do next. I believe that it's important to give people their roses while they're alive. It makes no sense to wait until they're dead and gone to talk about how much you appreciated them. And so for the next few moments, I'm going to mention or hand out some roses to a few people here in the audience. And so first, I want to thank the two people on this earth most important or most responsible for this day. That is my uh, mother and father, Rudolph and Caroline Pop. I've been blessed to have a father whose example is that strength and compassion are not mutually exclusive characteristics in a man. I've equally been blessed to have a mother who demonstrates the st strength and beauty of womanhood, parents who provide the foundation for success through love, discipline, and excellence. And so if you'll stand just one more time, show some love to my parents. They say in the church, you got to honor your parents. There are some people here representing my undergraduate alma mater, Anderson University. I want to thank you for a fine education. The folks at Anderson University are passionate about service to others through Christ, a belief that if you fall down, you can still get back up, because after all, saints are just sinners who fell down and got back up. So thank you to Anderson University. 
I also want to thank uh, my brothers and sisters with the Indiana State Police, as the governor mentioned. This was an organization that gave me an amazing opportunity to serve the citizens of this state as a trooper, an organization whose motto during the, the academy still serves me uh, as a guiding principle, excellence through discipline. Thank you to the state police. In Indiana, we're, we're so blessed to have four, soon to be five, four fine law schools. And I know, is Adrian Myron still here? I'm going to have to depart from the code of judicial conduct just for a minute because we're not supposed to show favoritism and be biased. But I'm going to have to be biased towards the red and white of Indiana University, my alma mater, and say thank you to Indiana University for a fine legal education. To Sheriff Jim Kennedy of Monroe County, who at the time was the chief of the Bloomington Police Department, who hired me as a legal advisor, allowed me to work through law school and buy a steady supply of ramen noodles so I could eat in law school. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Sheriff Kennedy. To the former Chief Justice and now Senior Judge Randall Shepard and the Indiana Conference for Legal Educational Opportunities Fellowship, thank you for your professional and or academic relationships. Those of you in the room who've had the honor of arguing a case before a jury know how critical it is to gain experience in order to become an effective advocate. For me, it's important to thank Prosecutor Rodney Cummings, of Madison County, who hired me as a deputy prosecutor, a job that gave me numerous opportunities to practice trial advocacy. Thank you, Mr. Cummings. Those of you in the room, and I see some of you have had the pleasure of starting your own law practices or starting your own business. You know of the risks and expenses that have to be borne to do that, the office space, the computers, the office supplies, the insurance, and other expenses that have to be purchased even before the first client walks through the door. For me, thanks must be given to Max Howard, a man who's helped many young attorneys striking out. And so, Max, I just want to say thanks for being a fair and generous landlord. Being a judge is not easy. It's a calling. It's a calling that requires skill, wisdom, knowledge, a calm demeanor, and a commitment to the rule of law. For me, thanks must be given to one of two judges most responsible for providing me with an example of what it means to be a good judge. Thank you, Judge Dennis Carroll of Madison Circuit Court, for your example, your mentorship, and friendship. And let me take a few moments now to thank my other judicial colleagues from Madison County, the bar, members of the bar from Madison County, and citizens of Madison County for your support and friendship. Thank you, Governor Daniels, for this is the second time you've honored me with the trust that you have uh, for me through an appointment to office and bestowed upon me the privilege of serving the citizens of this state. It's not an honor I take lightly, and so I thank you uh, yet again. Thank you also to my new colleagues on the Court of Appeals who have extended such a warm welcome to me. Thank you. There are also many uh, esteemed leaders in the room, and I'm going to take a few moments now to thank also the second judge most responsible for showing me what a good judge is, but let me first talk to so many of you who are esteemed leaders uh, in this state and around the country, people who have and continue to provide good examples of leadership to those of us who are younger. It's important to say that your example is critical. Your example is critical because we have been and are watching you. We're watching what you do. We're watching how you tackle problems, we're watching how you face ethical dilemmas. We're watching how you treat people. We're watching you so we can know what to do. In other words, since Christmas is coming, we are watching to see who's naughty and who's nice. <laughs> I'm happy to report that Judge Darden has been very nice. <laughs> Thank you, Judge Darden, for the opportunity to clerk for you and the lessons you've taught about what it is to be not only a good judge, but a good attorney. And it's my great honor to join you on the Court of Appeals of Indiana. We are blessed here in Indiana. We are blessed here in Indiana. I know you didn't think you were coming to church, but it's okay to say amen. We are blessed here in Indiana. <laughs> All you have to do is look around the world and see examples of pain, dysfunction, and injustice. And then all you have to do is look around this room. 
I see faces of men and women, faces that are white, brown, and black, rich, poor, and in between, sitting in the courtroom of the Supreme Court of the state of Indiana. There are some folks in this room who remember a time when that would not be so. We're blessed. And I'm honored to be joining the judiciary in this capacity at this time in our history. I'm honored to be part of so many judges that are committed to the cause of justice. A judiciary that believes that justice doesn't mean just us, but that justice means access to the courts, whether you're a Republican or Democrat, male or female, black or white, Protestant or Catholic, Jew or Muslim, rich or poor, born of some name or no name. Justice means everyone is entitled to have a dispute heard or presided over by a fair and impartial judge that is committed to the rule of law. That is my promise to you as I accept this assignment. Thank you again for allowing me to serve you, and I hope you'll stay around, come up and thank me, and allow me to thank you for coming today to this roving ceremony. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Judge Pyle. I have to make one more apology. I'm not very good at reading my cheat sheet. I would also like to recognize Virgil Madden, who's senior policy advisor to the lieutenant governor, and thank him for coming as well. Today is a day of celebration as we officially welcome our newest judge to the Court of Appeals. These occasions have a life of their own as they cause us to reflect on our court, our state, and our nation, and more importantly, on our own good fortune to live in a country where industrious is industriousness is recognized, integrity is val val valued, I don't know why I'm having a problem here, is valued, and intelligence is celebrated. But no one gets to this point without the support of family, friends, parents, teachers, mentors, <laughs> and a life's worth of experience. A cursory glance at Judge Pyle's accomplishments is humbling. A first-rate education, a four-year record of service as an Indiana State Trooper, an IU Law School degree, a term as a Clio Fellow and clerkship with our friend, colleague, and now senior judge, Carr Darden. Add to this teaching and service as a deputy prosecuting attorney, and you have a clear picture of the gifts Judge Pyle brings to our court. But as it says on the National Archives building in Washington, D.C., what is past is prologue. As noteworthy as these achievements are, they are nowhere as important as what Judge Pyle will do in the future. The knowledge, skill, and dedication he brings to our court will once again bring new energy and vitality to our work. As a leader in Indiana's legal community, he will excite and inspire a new generation of attorneys and scholars and by his example, mentorship, and dedication, he will bring that same leadership to all of our citizens. Thank you again, Judge Pyle, for wanting to join our court, and thank you for being here. I'd like to thank all of you for coming to spend this day with us and hope you will join us for the reception in the atrium. Thank you.
This court is adjourned.